we positioned ourselves that when people actually learn our tool and understand what we do, um, a lot of people come and say, it's a different product. And they, uh, a lot of people won't even say we're competitors would say an air DNA, even though in reality, it's all data and it's vacation rental data. So you could say we are. So, um, I mean, it, it is different and that's why we made it because we're not trying to tell you, um, you know, oh, here are the rev here's how much money you can make. We're trying to help you find the right places to invest in. Welcome to the Hassle-Free RE Podcast, a real estate podcast where we bring you stories, education, and tips for investors and real estate enthusiasts. If you're interested in investing in real estate or just want to keep a pulse on what's happening in the market, then this podcast is for you. Thanks so much for listening and tuning in. If you enjoy our show, please make sure to subscribe and give us a five-star review. We'd greatly appreciate it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Hassle-Free RE Podcast. I am your host, Dave Menapace, and here is my co-host. Kimberly Menapace. <laughs> and today we are joined by a very special guest. His name is Kenny Bedwell, and Kenny is the CEO and founder of STR Insights. Um, many people who have listened to these different episodes or seen some of my YouTubes know that I'm a huge advocate of STR Insights, and we'll get into what the tool is in just a moment. Um, but as a real estate agent, I've leveraged it for uh, learning more about my specific market and gathering data from it to help uh, inform my buyers or sellers uh, in an effort so they can achieve their goals of buying or selling. As a co-host, I've used it to help underwrite deals and do my analysis and appraisals of understanding what a house could make in terms of revenue. And then, of course, as an investor, I've used it for our own investments. So uh, a tool I'm really, really passionate about. Uh, I'm really excited to have Kenny on. Today, we're going to share his story from life before and life during, and maybe we'll talk about what the future is of the company. And so with that, Kenny, why don't you introduce yourself? Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Kim. Uh, glad to be on here to, to share my story and, and hopefully help more than one listener, but at least one listener, um, you know, and, and, and either start their journey or, or continue their journey into the STR world. So um, my name is Kenny. I, uh, my background is, well, I love to tell people first and foremost, I am a short-term rental investor as well. I have uh, six properties I own and manage, um, and uh, all around New York. I live in uh, Buffalo, New York, so Western New York, and they're Western New York and in Central New York in the Finger Lakes uh, on Watkins Glen. Um, I have properties that are apartments and uh, properties that are seven bedroom homes. It it, it varies, but um, that that's what I do, and I've been doing it for four years. Um, I moved. I'm not a native of New York. I or Buffalo. So I'm I'm actually not a native of the snow. I <laughs> I, uh, I came from the South. I grew up in Georgia and um, I moved uh, to Buffalo about five years ago. Um, but I moved here because I got recruited by Citibank. So I actually worked as a, a research analyst in the equities market uh, for Citigroup and uh, helped them. And we analyzed different industries and Fortune 500 companies and we're tracking their their revenue metrics and and all all different types of uh, uh, I guess KPIs you could say for those different uh, companies, um, and that was my uh, main gig and my side hustle with short term rentals. I started small with a duplex. Um, I've house hacked. I've done uh, you know just rented out long term and short term rental on the other side to test the waters. And and once I realized that hey this short term rental game is is really really lucrative. Um, you know, I'm making three X what I could be making on long-term rents. Like this is easy. Let me, let me grow. Let me, let me do more of these. So I've done rental arbitrage as well. I've done co-hosting. I've kind of done a mixed bag to really grow and, um, get, uh, per, acquire more properties. And so, um, and in fact, in the beginning of 2021, so, you know, COVID's COVID's going on full swing, and a lot of hosts kind of quit in my area because they were nervous or they weren't sure what to do. And I just kept going. And it was some of the best uh, months for our businesses because people had dropped out. People were still traveling and coming. I mean, Buffalo, New York, people are like, well, why do, why do people come to Buffalo? And we have Niagara Falls. And Niagara Falls, 10 million people a year go to Niagara Falls. Um, we've got uh, the Buffalo Bills. We've got 
you know, it's a city, there's schools, there's hospitals, we've got like one of the top cancer uh, medical centers uh, in downtown Buffalo. And so there's a lot of stuff that goes on. Uh, people travel there all the time. And so, um, hey, there's still demand, and we had the supply. And so we were we were killing it. So I wanted to expand my portfolio and look outside of that, um, outside of Buffalo. And what I found is I was going online, I was going to multiple data providers and platforms. And I was looking for um, somebody to kind of just tell me what are the best markets that I should be investing in that fit my preferences. And I, and I emphasize that because um, everyone's budget is different. Everybody's, uh, you know, not everybody wants to invest in Buffalo, New York, or not everybody wants to invest in, um, you know, on the beach. They might want to be in the mountains or ski or on a lake or a river or near themselves and driving distance. Um, and so there's all these limitations and I couldn't find a data platform out there that could guide me in that direction. They could tell me if I told them a market, they would tell me the, the revenue metrics and everything I needed to know in terms of how well the, the properties in that market were doing, but it wasn't necessarily based on what my preferences were. You know, everyone's saying, oh, go to Gatlinburg, go to 30A or go to Destin or these other hot markets. And at the time they were doing well, but I couldn't afford that personally. So and and none of these none of these, these platforms were able to tell me, yes, here are the markets that you can afford to purchase a vacation rental in. Right. And so um, with my knowledge and skills I learned at Citibank, I uh, created my own platform. And it, originally, it wasn't to sell to the public, believe it or not. Ah, uh, yeah, that's kind of cool. It wasn't. It was for myself. And uh, yeah, it, it was it was just some spreadsheets. So I had multiple spreadsheets I put together. I found a way. The key and the biggest differentiator in our product is the fact that we get vacation rental uh, ho housing valuations similar to what you would say housing prices. Are. So it's not residential home, like the medium home listing. It's a vacation rental homes, which is key right. um, because it, it varies market to market. And especially if you're on the beach, we know that beachfront properties cost more than properties off the beach. So, um, and at, we need to know that as investors because that can help us uh, with affordability. So um, I, I just got this myself and, and tried to find a market that I could afford that, that, you know, that fit my preferences as well and my, my revenue goals. And I did. And then I was sharing it with some of my um, other fellow investors who were in um, my mastermind. Uh, mm -hmm. Bill Face Mastermind. And uh, they were like, Kenny, you need to share this with other people. You need to share this with the world. They need to know this information to yeah. make prudent financial decisions of where they should be looking instead of just chasing where everybody else was going. And so I I was like, okay, why not? And I gave it a shot. And so that's, that's how STR Insights was <laughs> created and why it was created. Um, and uh, anyway, so I had to leave City obviously. <laughs> and, uh, so I, I'm, I've been full-time SCR insights for some time now, but, um, yeah, so that, I mean, we, we literally launched it just, uh, July, 2022 and, um, it's really kind of taken off and, and we've seen some, some great, uh, successes from it, but, um, yeah, that's kind of my story and my why and, awesome. and how I got to where I am. Yeah, Kenny, I'd love to dig into the timeline a bit more because you, sure. you said you launched STR Insights in July 2022. So tell us what were the what was the year you started your short term rental investing journey, and then a couple other of those points. I I think it's always helpful to have that perspective. Yeah, yeah, it, it definitely took a lot of time. Um, so 2021, beginning January 2021, is when I had that question: Hey, I want to expand and grow my portfolio. Where should I be looking? What markets are there? You know, market regulation limitations I should be taking into account. Um, and then that started. You know, hey, let me find. Okay, let me get all this data together. Um, you know, as I was shopping around, couldn't get the answers I wanted. So I started getting the data together, which took a lot of time. But in October of 2021, um, I had a prototype uh, that I was sharing with other investors. Um, and it was fancy, fancy spreadsheets. I say fancy spreadsheets. Sure. I mean, spreadsheets. <laughs> but, that's you know, a, that's an like, MVP. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, very much MVP. And um, 
yeah, it's like, this is how you, you know, sort on and find top markets and, you know, you can play with the filters and and put different things in and, um, and yeah, so, I mean, that's, that's kind of, and then so October, and then, uh, that's where I got a lot of feedback that you need to turn this into an actual product for the public. Um, and, uh, so I, so I did, I, I called one of my friends who was a developer and I said, Hey, are you interested? Let's do this. And so we started building it out. Um, and then we had a legitimate MVP, I think in March or April of this year, 2022. Um, and then we started just kind of generating interest and uh, did did a soft launch to see. And thank goodness we did that. <laughs> so like work out all the bugs and stuff at a conference. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been really fun. And then July we did, did our uh, final public launch. Uh, so yeah, that's where we are. That's awesome. And how long had you been an investor by the time you started STR Insights? So when was your first duplex property purchased? 2018. Okay. So still pretty, pretty quick timeline. And then I, I'm, I have a burning question of how you got the data. I remember hearing, um, uh, and a podcast about how Zillow started and getting data for them was really challenging at the very, at the beginning. So yeah, you said it was challenging getting the data. What, how, what were the sources you, you used to build this? So I used a couple of sources to kind of get started. Um, so I started with like as much free stuff as possible. I still had to use i had to use some tools to get the revenue metrics from airbnb and and vrbo but the valuation data which is the key um that really so we first we were trying to pull stuff from zillow and we're looking at certain properties and locations and, and pulling those properties and then um until i shopped around and found a technology that actually helps me get the addresses of vacation rentals and that's really our that's really our secret. So we're able to our secret sauce is we're able to pull addresses um, of vacation rentals from Airbnb and VRBO, and then go to a third party like a House Canary or uh, I've used different ones. They're all pretty much the same, but they'll give you a valuation like an appraisal or a zestimate, you could say, uh-huh. of those properties you give them. So now that we know that we know and we check that monthly. So now that you know that you know roughly how much a vacation rental in the market would be. Now that doesn't reflect what's on the MLS or what's available for sale, but it gives you an idea of if you can afford a specific bedroom count of a property in any market, especially vacation rental. So um, that's, so once I've kind of figured that out, it, it came in pieces, you know, the data got a lot more accurate and, and more comprehensive for the entire country. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's kind of the the journey of, of acquiring all that information. So. That's awesome. I think that's super cool. And I, I'm like about to get way too technical. So I'll rip myself out of this in just a no, second. Okay. You know, as an agent, one of the ways that uh, for a deal, this was super cool for a deal in Dennisport. Uh, and I think I even have a YouTube on this, but um, we were able to use the data in STR Insights. And what was really neat is Dennisport Dennisport has a regulation, it has an STR regulation, but unlike most of the other towns in the Cape, uh, which go by bedroom, like number of bedrooms, two people per bedroom plus two at the end, right? So four bedroom could sleep 10, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And Dennisport, it's by square footage of the home. They don't care if there's one bedroom, if it's 2000 square feet, they're letting you sleep 12 people in there. It's really interesting. Now, in Dennisport, all the homes are on septic. So if you have four actual bedrooms, if the septic size is only three bedrooms, that house is only going to sell as a three bedroom. And we had that happen. We had a house listed as a three bedroom with clearly four bedrooms in it. So we got the three bedroom price, but I was able to use STR insights for two things. I was able to say, look, like the real value of this as a short-term rental is, is this, which is like, 200 grand. It was, it was like 30% more. Um, and here's the revenue you're going to get. And what happened? I had the health department come in and they gave us a permit for 10 people on that home. It was fantastic. <laughs> you, you know yeah, that I mean? is awesome. Yeah. And so like agents, if you're listening to this, you can leverage this data to kind of figure out like what, what is your goal in a given market and where are you seeing anomalies, but like on the MLS and start to connect those dots for your clients? Like those are the types of home run deals that you can use, that you can find 
by yeah. leveraging, like, I don't, I don't see, I don't know of any other tools on there that give that valuation number like STR insights does. I, and I think that's, that's key because I've seen people use that in different markets for different reasons. So for example, um, I call it a, like holes in the market. So basically you'll see, um, because we show revenue and the next two, we show the valuations. And then that gives us a gross ROI because we take revenue divided by valuations, get a gross ROI. So we'll see, you know, and it's not, it's not linear. It's not a straight line of, Oh, a one bedroom makes 20,000, a two bedroom, you know, makes 30,000 like that. It, it varies because depending on, you know, the properties and then they all cost differently as well. Right. And so really what you end up seeing are more like bell curves. So there are certain property counts depending on the market right. that do better than others. I always say bigger isn't always better. And, right. and that's true in a lot of, especially mountain markets or inland markets mm -hmm. where you have smaller groups of people going there. There's more demand of that, but no one really knows that that, that information isn't available. Um, and, but you can see it in the data and the trends. And uh -huh. um, another example of this specifically I saw was in uh, a market called Banner Elk. Um, mm -hmm. I was helping someone look for, uh, an opportunity in that market. And we noticed that the four bedroom revenue was performing better on average than the five bedrooms, which was really strange. You're like, okay, why is that? And when we looked at the five bedrooms, so there, there were like 15 four bedroom properties in that market. We looked at the five bedrooms, there was only three. Hmm. And the three were, you know, the, there was no decor, there was no style, there was there was nothing to it. And then you look at the six bedrooms, you know, and there were a couple and they were doing more, but there was this huge gap and you knew that the five bedrooms were, should be in that gap, but it's not showing it. So from the untrained eye, when you're looking at that, oh, well, five bedrooms, they're just not great in that market, but the tool lays it out and you can catch those anomalies like you're talking about. And if you know the area, you, you have even more expertise in that and say, well, look, look what I can do with that. Um, but we were able to find a five bedroom, know that it can actually do more, you know, because it would be nicer and we're going to add all these right. things to it and, and do even better than the other five bedrooms. So um, I think that that's, there's a lot of unique ways to use it and uh, that to catch those things. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and the other thing too, is like, you know, I've, of course, like we've, we've purchased and gotten like one month subscriptions on air DNA back before we knew of STR insights, but, um, usually like something like air DNA is just quick, like, okay, just got to verify a couple of things. Cool. 40 bucks zip code. I'm already under contract. Cool. Like, let's just like round this out. But with STR insights being at like a very affordable price and getting access to the entire country, it is, you know, you, and you get better at analyzing deals, right? The more that you do it, you know, we had, um, a couple of weeks ago, we had Ryan Bakey on and he was really like, he said something really insightful. He's like, run the numbers on deals over and over again. You don't have to keep buying them, but just keep doing it. Right. And that's super important. And I think getting a familiar film familiarity with one or several markets, but also the tool that you're using, right? Like STR insights using that tool for these different markets, you start to very quickly know when there's like a little bit of a hole or a pocket, something like you just said. But if you're sort of treating the tool as this, like, okay, I just need it for a month because I want a house in Dennis Port Cape Cod and then I'm out. Like that's not really the intention. Or I should just say, you're not getting as much value out of the tool if that is your approach, right? So it's like, I treat my subscription to STR Insights like a utility bill, right? Like I need electricity every month. I need internet every month. The way I use the tool is the same. It's it's built into my business budget. So it's just one of those things like, and I, and I say that because there's been, there's always different people posting like, oh, should I try this tool or that tool or this tool? And it's like, have one that you can just always rely on and keep in your back pocket. Um, all right, I'll digress. I just had to dive. No, I, I actually think it's good to lean in there and actually take a step back and say, 
what are the competitor tools and how they differ? Because I think not everyone has used AirDNA or is familiar. So, and I know when Dave and I would describe STR Insights, we'd say, oh, it's like AirDNA plus Zillow. Or I, I think those, yeah. <laughs> those comparisons can help. Or I say, I work at yeah. Car Gurus and I say, I'm we're the Zillow for cars. So I think those could help give a, a quick snapshot. But yeah, I love Kenny, you know this space better than we do. So what are the competitor tools and how are they different? Um, I'm honestly probably not the best one to ask that, uh, to be honest, I, you know, I know it, it's our tool. Um, I would not, I'll say this, I would not be doing this if I didn't believe our tool was vastly unique. Um, and we've created a tool on a platform, you know, where, like I mentioned, we show like the housing valuations of short-term rentals. We show regulations by market. Uh, we show destination types. Like you can filter markets by like a beach or whatever, you know, mountain or ski. Um, nobody offers that that I know of yet. I mean, they could, but um, we even have partner realtors like Dave on there. Um, you know, like nobody has that kind of, um, that I, at least I know of. I mean, I could be completely wrong, but I, I'm not out there doing, I'm trying to make our tool better. And so, um that so like we've we positioned ourselves that when people actually learn our tool and understand what we do um a lot of people come and say it's a different product and they uh, a lot of people won't even say we're competitors would say an air dna even though in reality it's all data and it's vacation rental data so you could say we are so um i mean it, it is different and that's why we made it because we're not trying to tell you um you know oh here are the rev here's how much money you can make we're trying to help you find the right places to invest in. Um, because really the investor journey begins with where should I look? So if you're if you're out there, you're listening to this and you, you don't have your first one yet, this is in your mind, the back of your mind. Where should I be in investing? You know, is it in my backyard? Can I do that with all the regulations if you have those? Or maybe I can. And then not only that, so I, I imagine it like a filter. So where, like what market should I target? And then where in those markets should I target? Because that's very, very important. Um, and then finally, as you drill down, you can actually start to identify, okay, now that I found an area, let me find and look for properties within that area and how much revenue they're making. Um, and then you can go on Zillow or Redfin and actually circle those areas and, and find properties. Um the last, I'll, I'll, I'll say this, you know, this crazy, this is my experience. The last property I bought is a seven bedroom, seven bath. It's in Watkins Glen, New York. Um, I bought it for uh, $350,000. Um, it will gross um, per year as in the current condition, it's in about 110,000. Um, I'll have a cash on cash return of uh, about 70%. Um, and the, I found that property. I'm not trying to brag or anything. I found that property in 10 minutes. Okay. Most people are like, okay, I can't, how do you, how did you do that? It, you know, you must've been lucky. It must've been, you know, a bunch of different factors. And the truth of the matter is I found two properties that would do over a 50% cash on cash return in 10 minutes in the same day. And it's not because I have all this data and it's not because, oh, I had STR Insights before. This is actually when STR Insights, a lot of other people had it. It's how I used it. It's because I identified the right market first or the right markets I should invest in first and then the right areas in those markets and then look for properties for sale in those areas. Because once you do that, when you have an actual address of a property pop up, you automatically know roughly how much it will do. Sure, you need to do some more due diligence and look into different things, but you haven't you can quickly identify and analyze deals by knowing the right areas. And so if you target that across say four to five different markets at the same time, you found the right areas to invest in, you circle those on a Zillow and then you look for properties for sale, you know what those properties are going to do. Um, and so if a really good deal pops up, you know, hey, this is a good deal. I need to I need to get that property and jump on it right then and there. Instead of the the current way is we 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 look all over the MLS. We try to find properties for sale or to rent. If you're doing rental arbitrage, we plug it in an online calculator to see how much revenue it's made. Then we got to call a realtor or we try to look at the regulations, and then we try to analyze what the competitors are doing, what amenities I need. But if you do it, you flip it upside down. You identify those things first, then properties that appear in there will 
it'll be a lot easier to analyze. You'll be able to move a lot faster. So that's how I do it. And that's how I believe we should be looking at doing that, uh, that strategy in 2023 with uh, the way the economy is going. So anyway, I know yeah, that, like, no, that's, took that's that in a different direction. Cool. But. <laughs> and I liked it. I, th I thought that was super yeah. cool. Um, and, you know, to your point, also another differentiator is uh, there's like the regulation filter too, which is obviously yep. a super hot topic right now. Um, so let um let me ask you a couple just more like business owner questions because there's been um so I guess since COVID, Kim and I have started like several different businesses from like a WeWork competitor to more recently like our co-hosting and now I'm an agent and whatnot, but. Um, what are, and this is more of a personal question. You don't have to answer, but what just like, as of right, you, you come from a W2, you now walk into this, this world where you are a business owner. And obviously when you start out a business, you wear a million different hats. What are some of the, uh, I'll ask two questions, but just one first and let you answer. What are some of the challenges that maybe you didn't expect that you had to sort of overcome just as like a general business owner, right? When, when you kind of yeah. left city and boom, did this full time. I think the number one thing that a lot of business owners fail to do is value their time. So we, as human beings, most of us are uh, frugal, you know, and, and, oh, well, I can do this myself, you know, oh, I can, you know, I can handle this meeting or, you know, the simple task or, um, you know, wh whatever it may be, I can do it myself. Um, and, you know, I always grew up, my, my dad always taught me, you know, if you want something done right, you do it yourself. And, the problem, though, as as we own businesses, especially with employees, we have to delegate. We have to because our time is extremely valuable. And if you're in this industry, not just, oh, I own a, you know, I own a technology company, but I also own short term rentals. And that is a business, too. I'm a CEO. I have six units. I have cleaners. I have maintenance staff. I have everybody. And I have to value my time. So if something happens, I have systems in place you know, I, I call it the, the chain of command, essentially, uh, to value my time and basically put, uh, you know, somebody else takes on that responsibility. I call someone or, or whatever they may be. Um, and so in my business and short-term mental insights, um, I have to do the same thing. I have, um, I have people in, you know, different positions and, and uh, they take on certain things, but it's still a struggle. Though. I'm not going to lie. I'm not, I've not perfected it, but it starts with valuing your time. So that's just kind of my uh, two cents on it. So, And I, I think with businesses, you have these certain breaking points where, you know, this probably isn't high value of your time. You don't enjoy doing it, but you need, you want to reach a certain threshold before you outsource it. For us, we are taking a ton of time with accounting and I'm the bookkeeper right now. So um, with four different accounts that we're managing on QuickBooks and I, Dave and I were talking about kind of our core values and tenants for our businesses. And one of them we came up with was do what you love and delegate the rest or delegate what you don't. And we're not yeah. saying, I yep. don't like do, I don't like doing this. I don't want to do it anymore. It's more, it's a motivator for me or us to get to a place where we, we are looking for a VA in the next month. So I can't wait to be able to outsource this, but I, I think that's a really good point. Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, that's, that's really important. I call that, um, you know, do what you love. And um, I, I call that mastering your craft. So the more that you can focus on whatever you're good at, do that. Um, and if somebody else is better at another thing, then give them that thing to do. Um, let people specialize in what they're, they're best at. And then, you know, uh, take on the things that are like left over if you have to. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's stuff that I have to deal with. Like, Right now, we don't have an HR representative. And so anything, you know, HR related, payroll, uh, all that nonsense, I call it nonsense. I despise HR stuff. Um, I've just had some bad experiences with, with HR and city. So um, anyway, uh, just all that. I have to handle that. And I and I hate it. But um, it's it's honestly not that big of a deal. And I do it. Um, but at some point I know, Hey, I can't wait to get to a place, like you said, where I can hire an HR rep who can do this for me. Uh, right now we don't need it, 
but uh, in the future we will. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's identifying that and knowing that, Hey, let's get to that point one day where I can offload this onto somebody else, I think is, is the key. Like you said. Do you find at some of these conferences, and I'm thinking of a very specific situation from when we saw you in Miami, you, I don't even know if you remember this, but uh, we, Kim and I were coming up the elevator. We walk out of the elevator and I see a lady talking to you about probably like some very, very specific <laughs> question around a house or a market. Yeah. And we like go drop stuff off at the room, spend a couple of minutes there, come out. I still see her. I'm like, oh my goodness, this poor guy. And do you find that like at conferences or just whenever lots of people just sort of like converge on you to be like, is this a good deal? Is this a good deal? I, did, yeah. I bet that happens a lot. All the time. Yeah. It, uh, it's, it's pretty frequent. I mean, um, I, I'm like, and purposely, I'm, I am trying to establish myself as someone in the space who has experience and know how and the data and the information. My, my view, especially once I started seeing the data that is available, we don't normal when I say we, I, I, I talk about like, you know, regular investors investing in short term rentals, we do not have access to all of the stuff that's in the background you know, that Airbnb has or, or Verbo knows or or it really any data platform out there. I'll even say SDR Insights. I mean, you are seeing uh, maybe 10% or less of what is legitimately stored in the background. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, so knowing that I try to share as much insights as I can and I really have time for to help people, which leads to people coming up to me and asking me, hey, you know, can you help me? Um, I, I, uh, this one guy reached out to me, he emailed me, uh, the other day and said, Hey, Kenny, um, you know, can you sit down with me and help me understand STR insights and how I can optimize my portfolio? Sure. Let's sit down for 15 minutes. Lo and behold, he has a hundred million dollar portfolio, real estate portfolio in like two markets. He owns like 50 properties in one market and like 10, like multi-million dollar properties in another one. And he's like, yeah, I'm like, look, and he's a really smart guy. Um, and I'm like, I don't really feel qualified to, to be speaking to you kind of situation, but um, he's telling me about things and I've never been to his market, but I have the data and the information to share. And he realized that. And so um, I'm not advertising everybody to do this because I, I cannot do that uh, for everyone, <laughs> but I was able to help him and we're able to identify amenities that I can actually help him uh, bring up revenue. And it, it varies market to market. And so right. I have that information and I try to share it as much as possible, which leads to people coming up and, and asking, hey, like from your, what you see, like, can this do that? And and I expect it. So I just prepare myself every time, <laughs> every time I, I go into a public event. <laughs> I see a I consulting I, opportunity for I your know. company. Yeah. Well, and I want to say, I don't think it was even a couple minutes. I think it was about an hour that we saw you talking to this woman. By it, the elevator. it was, yeah, it was. Yeah. I remember the conversation. Yeah. So, um, and, and ultimately what I find from a lot of investors is they, it, it's all about confidence to pull the trigger. And so this, this one individual, um, love her to death. Uh, she just lacked a lot of confidence to, she kind of knew what she needed to do, but I literally asked her all the, you know, business questions of finding a short-term rental and, and, you know, her goals and and what she wanted out of it and the next one and so on. And um, ultimately it was just her afraid to just go ahead and to, to move on due to her circumstances. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, I think part of it, and I end up with a lot of people like that. I say, look, you know, everything you need to, you just need to do it. You know, what's holding you back. Right. And so I think the key here and what holds a lot of people back is, they don't associate themselves with a lot of other like-minded individuals. And so one, I applaud everybody who's listening because this is, this is how you, you start, you know, right. at a minimum cost, but you do need to find a like-minded group of people because that helps you get the confidence you need to pull the trigger when you need to do it. I would have never made STR inside. That wasn't even on my radar. I'm not a startup person. I'm a real estate investor. Um, if this is not, this is not what I do. Like for, I was like, Oh yeah, I want to do this in my life. Start a business, um, uh, or a tech company. Um, so, but it, it was because of the people around me that I was associating with 
they encouraged me and they said, Kenny, you can do this. Like I'm looking at it and telling you right now, you can do this. It's just a matter of you doing it. So by taking action. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's, I, I try to, that's why I really try to help people do is give them the confidence they need. Like this guy with a hundred million dollar portfolio, super smart dude. Honestly, he could figure it out on his own. It's just the confidence to right. you need somebody else to say, this is it, you know, and either agree with them or, or give them data that says elsewise. So. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's a lot of different ways to put yourself in the space of other people, right? There's, of course, there's masterminds. Kim and I love going to these different conferences, you know, yeah. we kind of, we do that and we're going back to Nashville and in, in March, obviously. And, um, if they advertise Miami again, I'm sure we'll go to that again because it's just, you know, we, and, it, and it's really interesting. And, and for us, you know, we've been to, uh, different real estate meetups locally. We're looking at starting our own STR meetup here in central mass, because there's all these long-term rental ones. And we do have long-term rentals in other markets, but it's like the passion that sort of feels like the day job and the STR. That's like our sort of passion, you know, it's, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's how I kind of describe it, but, um, there's a lot of different ways to be in the same environment to get that, that confidence and that boost. So, um, or you can go like pay E for an hour of his time and stick yourself in a room with him for an hour. <laughs> When we were in Miami, he was awesome. It was just like, he gives a lot of clarity. So that's a discussion for another day, but awesome dude. Um, so for my second question, what have been uh, some of like your proudest moments or biggest successes that maybe you expected or didn't expect just as a business owner? Um, man, I think so. Um, I, I love that, like, for me, it's able to just see like the growth and like bring on the employees and seeing them like excited and like catch the the dream, you know, or the vision, uh, like, and, and to, to see that, I think that's the more and more people we hire, like we just hired a, a um, we have, there's six of us on the team now, nice. um, you know, a couple months ago when we started in Nashville, when you guys saw us, there was three, you know, we've doubled. Right. Um, and so uh, I mean, we're, we're trying to, we're trying to get more and more and, and, uh, but to see those people like come on to catch the vision and then like really help propel the company is, is for me is uh, that, that's the real success in it um, where I don't feel like I'm the one like dragging like, all right, guys, let's do it. You know, it's, it, yeah, I am the leader, but um, this, they're, they're self-motivated individuals out there who, who get it. Um, right. That, that to me is a success. Um you know, some difficult things I think is um, looking at our tool and going, you know, we're not there yet. We haven't figured everything out. Um, I want, like, I know what we need, you know, I'm sitting there staring at it every day and I'm like, guys, like, this is what we need. And, and we're all working towards it. And we have some really exciting things uh, coming out soon that that will be even more game changers and, and other things too down the road that partnerships and stuff like companies like direct like we've gotten a lot of recognition from different uh uh different different uh businesses in, in our industry property management all the way to just different companies who want to integrate a partner or whatever and there are some really cool um opportunities that we're putting together that will change you know how we evaluate properties um it'll just make it faster and right. uh it'll, it's gonna be really exciting so i'm not gonna spoil I anything but i have some i i'm kind of it's a, it's the problem solving and that's what i enjoy doing how i everyone has this problem how do i solve it and make it easier and cut the time saved from you know five hours to five seconds you just put this in and boom it tells you everything you need to know um right. so that's that's the uh but at the same time you're just you're constantly, you know, self-evaluating and going, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. So that's kind of the, that's how I think. So You sound like a project manager, actually. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Well, that's what happens. I, I, you know, I, we have a, we have a product manager and, um, you know, I, I am constantly like talking to him about this stuff because I am also an investor, a short-term rental investor. And right. I'm like, guys, I am a customer of my, like, 
of my own product. Here's what I would like. I mean, I know it's not the best way to develop a tool, but <laughs> you know, I'm thinking this way and other people, I'm talking to other people, I'm in the forums, I'm in the groups. Uh, I'm starting to see more people talk about STR insights in these groups and like the comments and stuff. And I'm like, here's what people are saying, or here's what the people want. Like, let's do it or let's make it better or uh, whatever. So um, yeah, that's just kind of how I uh, approach things. And I, and I, I love that because um, I feel like it gives me a little bit more of a connection to, to others as being a, a short-term real investor who's also looking to grow their portfolio. I think that there's two really cool takeaways that I, I see from the story. One was, um, I think that you said in Miami that in June, people, you didn't have the regulation information in the tool yet. And you heard that from users that they really want wanted that. So you did integrate that. So you're still at this awesome stage where you can be reactive to that and agile yeah. and, and, and implement that stuff really quickly. And the second thing is to have a pro one of your six people be a product manager is really astounding for car gurus. When I started, I was the first product hire six years ago when we were already like 150 people. So, and right. they've been around for almost a decade. So I think that I, I think coming from everyone comes from such a unique background when they start a business. So I think it's very cool how you're building in. There's no right or wrong way on how to do that, but um, leaning into the data, you are a user and you're right, can be a careful balance between not assuming that you are the majority of users are exactly like you. You might be one of the sa super savvy, you know, top 10% kind of outlier version, but I think that's what it's been really cool to hear and observe what you guys have been doing this. Yeah, I love it. And we tried to you know, we can't, I wish every employee I had or was working for STR Insights owned a short-term rental or did something with short-term rentals. And they all want to, once they, they're getting, they're like a lot, especially the engineers, they have no mindset towards investing. You know, they're all about software development, coding, and you know, what kind of build that that's, that's awesome. And the, you know, the next hottest thing. And so, but when they start looking at the data and they're like, wait a second, you know, and you can see their minds, like it's coming together for them, like, whoa, I have access to this. And they start looking, you know, like I'm now. And so like two of them are, one of them is about to put a property in her contract, just like a, a vacation rental to start. Um, and then we, we found someone else we just hired on our team who, who bought uh, a vacation rental um, by using our software. He's like oh. his own walking testimonial. Um, yeah, I, it's great. Like he came to us and he's like, Hey guys, like, um, you know, this is what I do. And well, we met him at a conference and mm -hmm. he got our software, used it. And he came back and said, I, you know, I, and we, we found out what he did and we're like, we're looking for someone like you, you know, and, and interviewed him and he was great. So, um, yeah, that's I mean, cool. that's the, that's the, that's the cool part is, is having a team that were focused on the actual investor and their story. Um, and, and, you know, building a product around that rather than like, what's going to make us the quickest dollar. So <laughs> Well, and like what I, you know, again, like what I said is one, the, you know, at least the way I look at your tool, which is different than others is I, I, I do view it as, as a, as a tool that I carry with me, right? Like it's, for me, it, it was never one of these like, cool, I'm going to get it for July and then maybe, yeah. <laughs> you know, March of next year and, you know, whatever, um, and so I just think that it's like, no, this is like part of my arsenal. And what's great is it's my arsenal in like three different businesses. So that kind of, yeah. there you go. <laughs> I never know where to expense the, uh, <laughs> the monthly, yeah. it's like talking yeah. RCPA, uh, so that should that go as an agent, as the investor, the co-hosting okay. business, where should we <laughs> plug that one? And, um, but you know, that is how I look at it. And, um, and, and it really is amazing. It, it's fascinating. I, I think it's super cool too. And this is sort of a plug for those STR wealth conferences, any other conference you've presented at is I love how like each time you've presented, done a presentation at a conference with your tool, it's like a new secret code for using the tool itself. Like, a, you, you know what I mean? And so yeah. um, I think we talked about you know, last time houses up along a river in a certain market, because there's like fishing that happens there that nobody would ever know that. Right. Or like just different examples like that. And so again, it's just another plug for folks to like, if you're really serious about being in this space as like an investor or co-host or an agent, like get yourself to these conferences. That is a work trip 
for you. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? That is like, you should be going to these things, knowing like what you need to get out of this thing from a networking perspective and from an educational perspective and like soak it all in. And it's, you know, when I was talking with, um, another agent this morning that I was telling him about how I use the tool, I said like the, the going to those conferences and putting yourself in that space of everybody and having access to talk to the presenters and introduce yourself like that is the, that's the differentiator. Like I'm human, just like he was, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, I've gone to those things. I haven't necessarily done more deals, but I see a very, very high ceiling because I, I do have all of these different tools in my tool belt that I like using. So, yeah, yeah. I, and and when you talk to those people too, like I said, it's when, when you associate with, with like-minded people or people who are on a different level, it kind of naturally raises you up, opens your mind. I mean, yeah. I, my first event I went to was in 2019. It was in Nashville. It was, short, it was small. It was probably like 50 people. And I went there with the sole question of how do I host in a different market that's not within like a 20 minute drive? I just didn't think it was possible. And I'm like, how are these people doing it? And so I literally went to this conference. And I think it was like, a, it was like $3,000, um, you know, it wiped out my STR savings that I had. I just started this one unit. I was like, you know what, this money, I'm going to reinvest it and see what happens. And it really propelled me. It opened my mind. And I mean, I, I was sat down next to this guy. He had like 50 units somewhere. And I'm like, how, how do you do that? Like, how did you, in a difference, he's like, oh, it's easy. I just X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, boom, you know, like, it, and I realized that it was just like this, this confidence metric of, and fear really, you know, just once that gets blasted away, like you said, there's this really high ceiling and the possibilities are kind of endless. Um, and, and then, then you just start to really accelerate. So, yeah. And I, I think that uh, education can be found even in as little as a you know ten dollar ebook like Avery Carl's about um, short term when uh, short term rentals, long term wealth. Uh, if you can't afford thousands of dollars for a conference, she has yeah. uh, she talks about being a, a co you know co hosting out of state properties or places that are far away from you. So I think that there's a, you know no excuse to not reach out for education. There's varying degrees of it, and I think you they'll add velocity at different rates to you. But you can even do it as simple as library books even for free or purchasing books and then there's a whole podcast um i mean yeah obviously this one if you're listening to it there you go a pop yeah. up. there there are so many good podcasts out there in our space youtube videos um you know you can get a degree a youtube i call it youtube university i got a yeah. degree in that but seriously i mean that's how i got started in rental arbitrage i just watched a bunch of videos and then did it <laughs> yeah. you know and so i i mean there's so much good education out there that's that's you know, free or, or just, it just takes time, trade your time for, for that education that really you can get started, but constantly watching. And then um, I think the meetups are great too. Um, but then also I always say like, you know, if you have a passion for, it, you feel like that, that flickering flame start to, to burn within you, um, you know, ignore the naysayers. We're doing it, guys. I, I mean, you know, Dave said it, and I'm going to say it too. I'm just a normal person, you know. I don't consider myself on some special level. Um, I have access to information that's great, but other than that, I'm normal. I'm a normal host like everybody else. I got started the same way, fairly young, and like you can do it too. It's just a matter of figuring it out. Go do it. Do something. Take some sort of action. So. I love that. All right. Oh. I know we're coming up to time. So what is next for you in your investing journey? And then also for STR Insights, the business? Uh, my investment journey. Um, so actually, I'm going to get rid of some properties and I'm going to go for bigger ones. So sell some small ones and then take that money, probably 1031 them into some bigger properties, uh, probably next year, beginning of next year, um, just so I can uh, just timing. It's all about timing the market in terms of where you get a property. Like uh, my one in Watkins Glen, we launched. So we're in New York. It snows a ton. You guys, you know, you're in Boston yeah. or in Massachusetts. So like it snows a ton, you know? And so our season in Watkins Glen is end of April all the way to the end of November. And then that's it. it shuts down pretty much. And there's like nothing. Um, and so I got my property. We closed at the end of April. So I couldn't get it going until the end of May. So I missed a whole month of revenue. Um, but if I had timed it a little better, maybe it worked out some things, I, I probably could have captured that revenue to begin with. So it's really important 
um, that we time try to keep that in mind when we're we're doing our investments. So that's what I'm looking at uh, beginning of next year. I'll probably bring uh, get rid of some smaller ones and invest in some bigger properties. Um, and then SCR Insights. Um, we have some, I don't know, I can't really say, but we have some really cool ideas. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, a big one's going to come out and uh, in March. So I'll just keep it that simple. And um, yeah, so you guys will know. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll uh, yeah, so I mean, we, we've got some really cool stuff coming down the pipeline. Um, it's all about perfecting the data, making a lot more accurate uh, pinpoint, you know, where you can break down by property type and waterfront and and different things so anyway nice yeah. and and how can people find you um so you can go to my instagram uh, or uh, i think it's just at kenny bedwell um or uh facebook um on on both uh you can also you know at scr insights follow us go to our youtube um uh check out our youtube stuff you might see dave on there <laughs> so uh, and then uh, I also have a, a podcast too called STR Onomics. It's a, a podcast about just like data. I do it with Bill Faith. We talk about market data and amenities and different things like that. It's very high level, um, but it's more about like kind of a macro and micro view into the STR market space. So if you're a data nerd, you, you'll probably like that. So check that out as well. But yeah. It's, it is an awesome podcast. I've listened to a bunch of the episodes, so I really enjoy it. Thanks. <laughs> I honestly don't know how many people listen to it, but I always I'm one of them. Them. Yeah. Are people listening to it? But yeah, people are. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it's fun. I really like it. And we try to, I put out, I talk data. So like I'm, right. I try to put out numbers and, and help people in terms of that understanding certain things. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, Kenny, thank you so, so much for joining us. This was really, really neat. Maybe we can get you on again. Maybe we can do like our own little recording in Nashville or something. We'll see. That'd be kind we of should. Fun. Yeah, so let's get, do it. Get like a crew of us together. So, all right. Well, thank you so, so much. And uh, everyone be sure to check the show notes to see how you can get in touch with Kenny, how you can find the website and all that good stuff. And thanks for, uh, for listening. This podcast is brought to you by the Five Star Co-host, an Airbnb management and consulting company that helps homeowners turn their properties into passive income streams through short-term rentals. Do you want to turn your vacation house into a passive income stream? Then look no further. The Five Star Co-host has served over a thousand guests in several Airbnb properties and in varying markets.